Hi everybody. <clears throat> I'm in the school line waiting on my daughter um, and thought I would make a video and tell you guys where I've been for the last week or so. So, you know my dog is old and has had some issues with his back legs like sitting down real slowly and things like that, right? We thought it was arthritis, um, which it was a little. So last week, he started dribbling in the house, like his pee pee. And I think I said that on a video or the, the week before that, <clears throat> like he couldn't hold his bladder. And I thought it's just old age, but if he doesn't stop, I'm gonna take him to the vet and just get him a checkup, you know? And so then last Thursday, so today's May 22nd, Wednesday. So this past Thursday, um, all his PP was just dribbling. It wasn't a stream or anything like that. And so I started reading up on it and it said like a stone stuck in his urethra, you know, the worst cancer and all. And from Thursday or from Wednesday night to Thursday night, it was just barely any y'all. His bladder was huge. It was like, it felt like a baseball or softball, maybe bigger. I'm not really sure, but <clears throat> either way, Friday morning, I took him to the vet thinking they were just going to say it's a kidney stone or it's this or that. Well, it was prostate cancer. And he couldn't pee, y'all. He could not pee at all. So, the x-ray showed that this the cancer had pushed his urethra shut like 100%. So, he couldn't get anything out. And when he tried to poop, like strain to poop, it was crushing that too. Like, it hurt him and he couldn't poop. Um, and he would just have these little, like, thin ribbon-like poops, kind of. It was weird. And runny. So, I'm sorry to be, like you know, having TMI or whatever, but this is just what's been going on. So Friday we found out he had prostate cancer. I lost my mind at the vet's office. Like I did not expect that. Even though he was almost 13, he's really old. Um, I did not expect that. So she put him to sleep and drained his bladder, um, put him on some anti-inflammatory meds, some pain meds and some antibiotics. Cause he had a little bit of an infection where he couldn't pee. And she said, if these don't um, improve the situation where he can pee at all, she said, a lot of dogs have success and a lot don't, then we, she said, here's a five day um, dose and we will re, you know, convene on, you know, the next week, just call me. Well, y'all, this poor dog did not pee from Friday morning when she drained his bladder to Sunday morning. So 48 hours, he didn't pee one single drop. I mean, we followed him around, watched every move he made. Um, every time he went outside, you know, we watched him. He didn't pee one drop. And <clears throat> Saturday night, we were just laying in bed and he wanted to be alone. He went in the living room, wanted to be alone. Um, he has been doing that lately and we heard him hit his head. So what we had been doing was leaving the back door open so he could come and go out as he pleased. If he had to pee, he didn't have to come get us because he was in and out of our room like every five minutes went out. So I was just, I'm just gonna turn off the air conditioner in the house and leave all the windows up and leave the back door open so he can just go in and out. So that's what we did. Well, we hear this loud thud. I mean, it was so loud. And he had stood up and hit his head, y'all on the back door trying to go out. And when he got outside, he was walking sideways. His eyes looked really like rolled back in his head, which is what happened when my other dog passed away um, a year and a half ago. He, he collapsed. He had one of those episodes. I don't know what it was. I still to this day don't know. Um, and so my boyfriend went out and wrapped his arms around him and like got him back in the house where he wouldn't stumble and hit his head on a tree because we have three huge trees in our backyard and the porch and the steps and everything else you know and he was okay like we we were reading about the medication he was on and stuff and it said it could cause dizziness so we thought maybe he stood up and got dizzy and all that so sunday morning he still hadn't peed i called the emergency line at our vet's office and so i'm eating ice y'all that's been a thing for months now. I eat ice all the time. Um, so, I called the emergency vet and I said, it was a different vet than what we saw Friday, but it was the same office. And she was just the on call. And I said, listen, you know, we have to make a tough decision. 
um, here's what's going on. This dog has not peed one drop, you know, humanely, I feel as though it's not feasible to make him go through radiation or chemo or any of that at his age. He's 13. And she was like, I agree with that. You know, she said, we can try radiation to shrink his prostate cancer without the chemo. She said, it's got a low success rate, but we could try it. Given his age and given the spot where his prostate is, is so inside of his body. And she was like, we would have to do four or five treatments a week, which is crazy, y'all. He was 13 years old. So we made the difficult decision to let him rest and go be with Jesus at this point. Um, I've had this dog, I had him, we, so Sunday morning, I called her and she said, yeah, we went at one o'clock on Sunday. It's raining in my car, y'all. It's stuffy in here, though. Um, So we went at one o'clock on Sunday. I couldn't be in the room. My boyfriend stayed in there. I couldn't do it, y'all. I stayed in there. We visited. Um, We sat on the floor and played for like 30 minutes. And y'all, he was just in pain. He could not poop. He couldn't pee. And I mean, all weekend, I went back and forth like, okay, we can do the radiation, it's fine. We can do the chemo, it's fine. But I couldn't put that dog through that, y'all. He, listen, we would have never known he had cancer if he hadn't not been able to pee. Because the dog was still healthy and happy. He still loved to go on walks. He still ate two meals a day, like huge meals. He was always wanting to eat, drink. I mean, he, he didn't show any signs of cancer other than... He started sleeping more, um, you know, but he was old. So we just thought he's just an old man, you know, and he's, he had white on his muzzle all the way up to his poor little eyeballs. He was just getting old and I couldn't see putting him through that. I wanted to give him some mercy and some like relief. There's no telling how long this dog's been hurting, though, because the thing she said was so big, it was pressing on his spine, which is probably why he was sitting weird. Um, it cut off his urethra 100% in the end. And the vet on Sunday said, if he was peeing fine up until then, she said, it was probably very fast growing anyway, and it would spread, and it would have been, like, so bad on him, so... We just made the hard decision to give that poor dog mercy. And y'all, it was the hardest thing ever because this dog is my child. Um, a year and a half ago, we had two dogs. You know, we had a Malamute. And she uh, he was my daughter's dog. She had him for... She only had him for about four years. And we had to put him down because he had heart failure. Um... And he was a big dog. He was 115 pounds. You know, we got him when he was five. So, when he passed, he was almost nine, I think. Or he was nine. He had turned nine in June. And then we had to put him down November of 2022. Um, and so, she was devastated. But I wasn't as devastated because that was her dog. It wasn't my dog. But this is my dog. I've had him since 2016. Um, I had him for eight years and two months, y'all. And it has crushed me. That is my child. I have a Timu package at home to show you guys. Um, I have uh, some funny stuff that I found at the church sale yesterday. And then I went to Goodwill yesterday too. So I have a couple of videos I need to make. I just have not felt up to it. <clears throat> All since we put him to sleep. I haven't wanted to go to the house. I've been out working like literally 12 hours a day. Because I have not wanted to be at home around his stuff. Um, we're going to donate his stuff to the Humane Society. He has three dog beds, y'all. This dog had a bed in every room. He has his own love seat. You know, but I'm going to take all his stuff to the Humane Society. They said they would take his beds for sure, you know. And he can help other dogs be comfy because those dogs sleep on concrete or those little cots. And I was like, can y'all use these? And they're like, yeah. So, we're going to take those. I just have not had the heart to take them out of my house yet. Um... This is going to sound crazy, but I don't feel animals just die. I think they have a soul and a spirit. I think my dog will tell me when he's ready for me to take his dog beds, y'all. He had an attitude and a half. He was a half Austrian shepherd and half husky. And he was, he didn't have really any of the mannerisms of a husky. And he looked like an Aussie. He acted like an Aussie. And we called him an asshole because that's what he was. And if he got, like, really frustrated, he would roll his eyes like a person, and he would go, 
and like sigh, you know, he was so human like, but I just feel like if I said, Spooks, I'm going to go take your dog beds to the Humane Society, he would sigh and be like, you know, and so I'm just waiting until I feel ready, but I also know that it's healing to do that and to know you're helping other dogs. And so, I don't know. I'm not going to have another dog for a really long time. Um, I just don't, I don't have the desire for that. He was the dog, my sole dog. You know, I have not ever had to put a dog to sleep until my daughter's dog and then mine now. And I'm 43, so I was 42 no, I was 41 when we put Juno to sleep. That was our Malamede's name. And it was the first time I'd ever put a dog to sleep ever in my whole life. Like, we had dogs when I was a kid, but they all just died naturally. You know, you didn't take your dog to the vet and have them put down then. They just got sick and died. Um, and so, you know, when I was eight, my dog got shot by my neighbor because he was barking. That was very traumatic. Um, I had had him since a puppy when I was a newborn. So, he was eight as well. Like, we were both eight. And he was barking and barking. And my neighbor shot him through our fence. I watched him die for three days in our garage. Because the vet said there's nothing we could do. Either he'll heal and the bullet will stay in him. We can't get it out because it's too risky. Or he will die. And he died. He got an infection and died even though he was on antibiotics. So, at eight years old, that was some trauma. Um, you know, and I've had a couple dogs die just from old age. They didn't affect me like this one, y'all. This one is hard. This was my baby. Um, I do know I want to give another dog a home at some point from the shelter, maybe two, just so they have each other. Um, because Spooks and Juno were best buds, y'all. They were best buds. They were brothers. We called them Dale and Brennan, like from Step Brothers, because they were brats. Um, <laughs> they're together, I guess, now. But, um, I did all my crying Friday, Saturday, and Sunday when I didn't know what my decision was going to be. Once he was gone, it was like I knew he was not in pain. He was not struggling to pee. He was not hurting. Because there's no telling how long that poor dog was hurting, y'all. And just didn't. Dogs hide it well, you know. Um, I've been reading about it since he passed. And dogs will isolate themselves when they know they're going to die. They'll isolate themselves when they're in pain. When they've got something going on health-wise, you know. And it's weird because, like, he had a voracious appetite. He would eat his dinner. And I didn't feed him dog food. We cooked ground beef, steak, um, chicken. He loved tuna. Oh, my God. He loved tuna. Um, he loved salmon. He loved cheese. And so, we fed him just real food. Um, you know. And he would eat. And after he would eat for about 20 minutes, he'd lay there and go, mm, like it hurt him. And I thought, okay, either he's filling his stomach too full or there's something going on. Because that's been happening for like the last six months or so. Um, and he would whine so bad, y'all. And then once it settled and his belly settled, he would stop. So I don't doubt that there was maybe a tumor beginning then. And then about six months to a year ago, he had a fever. And he wasn't eating. And I think that might have been the beginning of it. Because it was over the weekend, I told myself that if he wasn't better by Monday, that we would take him to the vet. Well, he just perked up and got better, y'all. We started giving him CBD again. We gave it to him periodically, but I didn't like to give it to him a lot because it would make him sleep a lot. Because it was obviously, you know, it's a very calming thing. And he would get to where he slept. And so, I gave it to him more at night so he'd sleep. But, you know, um... I don't know. I feel like it started a long time ago and we just didn't know it. And, you know, I'm one that I just don't go to the doctor unless I'm sick and I didn't take him to the vet unless he was. And he was always such a happy, like, energetic, healthy dog. So, I take comfort in that fact because he was healthy till the day he died. Like, other than the tumor, obviously. But he was just a normal dog. He never, ever suffered. He never got down. He never 
refuse to walk. Like he would walk our neighborhood with us three times a day. And so, um, you know, the only thing that he had to go, you know, to sleep forever is the tumor. I just didn't want to put him through medical stuff. But y'all, I'm sorry. I just wanted to let you guys know where I've been. It's been a hard, hard week. Um, I'll get a Timu haul going here in my Goodwill, have my church haul, um, and start making videos again. I just can't right now. Like, I've been out working 12 hours a day just to avoid seeing his bed and his stuff and just the emptiness in our house. Like, his little toes clicking across the hardwood floor and everything else, you know. So, um, each day is going to get better, but I just want to tell you guys. And if you guys have had a pet pass away... You know, tell me in the comments. Let me know how that went for you guys. Like, I feel like I did my grieving when I found out he was sick. And I had to get, like, to a point where I accepted that I wasn't going to get him treatment because of his age. I didn't want him to be sick or put him through that. So, let me know, you know, in the comments if you guys have ever had to make that tough decision. Or if you've ever had a pet die that you felt like was your child. I joined a grief group on Facebook for pets. It's for pets, not people. Because so many people love their animals, y'all. I mean, I freaking love dogs. I don't, I don't know how people don't like dogs. Or how they don't love them as much as I do. And I mean, I guess some people are just indifferent. But I just love dogs so much. Especially Spooks. He was my soul dog. And... Uh, if you guys have had to face this recently or any time, I feel for you because it has not been easy. But, you know, dogs are so pure. They're not like humans. Humans kind of suck. Dogs, they're just innocent little babies. Like, you know, uh, all we can do is give them the best life we can. And when it's time for them to go, let them go. That's all we can do. But... I hope his little spirit visits me if it's possible. My boyfriend and I were in bed last night watching TV and we both heard a little like scratch at the door. He used to come to my bedroom door and scratch when he wanted in. Um, and we both heard it and we were both like, what was that? And he was like, it sounded like spook scratching. So I took a little bit of comfort in that, you know, because we both heard it. It wasn't just me or just him. We both did. So... Um, but anyway, I love you guys. I'll bring you a video just as soon as I'm emotionally able to do so. I'm still trying to just find meaning in life again after this dog died. I know that I have a lot to be thankful for, especially the fact that I had him for eight years, but it's going to take me a little time. So I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Um, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe now. I will be back with videos. I promise you. I just need a little time. So hope you guys are having a good week and I'll catch you on the next one.